dear students in the last classes so far we have seen about discrete uh, signals and how we compute their fourier transform and how this fourier transform computation can help us in estimating power spectral density what we call through periodogram so periodogram is simply a sample estimate of your true power spectral density or energy density so that part was completed there i also wanted to give you some basic ideas some intuitive understanding insights related to time frequency analysis because what i have seen in recent literature related to earth system science and climate science that time frequency analysis is also becoming important in earth system science it is important in seismology that i know but i have recently seen some papers or some examples where i saw that time frequency analysis is important in climate science as well uh, i will discuss one example after uh, uh, our next lecture uh, particularly from the weber transform that where you can see an example from climate science so today to start with first i will discuss before i go to the weber transform first i will discuss the meaning of time frequency analysis in general and how we obtained it with the help of fourier transform so this is our discrete fourier transform we have already seen so i would like to remind you again that we are in practice working with discrete data points so this is your data xk whether it is a time series data or whether it is uh, a space related data which is uh, the x is depending upon location so let's call all these as a time series so if this is your input data and the k is the index of this data as i had uh, explained in the last lecture that it can go from 0 to n where n are the total number of samples in your data so that is how you take a full uh, uh, fast i'm sorry forward n point discrete fourier transform and the inverse of this you can achieve like this so essentially the idea is that this fourier analysis expands a discrete time series in terms of complex exponentials linked with different frequencies so the frequency component is coming here so what you are getting different fourier coefficients each fourier co coefficient corresponds to a particular frequency n so that is how we get here as i explained 2 pi k 2 pi n divided by n is your frequency component and if we think philosophic uh, philosophically uh, a fourier analysis reveals that uh, reveals the contribution of all frequency components from the, all the harmonic components in their contribution in total power or in total energy that's what we have seen that how so if you compute the very vari uh, variance from the time series it will give you total variance but when you go in the fourier domain or in the fourier frequency domain you can see that how much each frequency or how much each waveform or periodicity or a cyclic behavior is associated with a particular frequency or a particular period is a contributing in your total variance so the basic assumption in fourier analysis when we do fourier analysis is the stationarity of frequency content that means the frequency content of the signal does not change with the time in other words that all frequency components exist at all times so if you have a signal we mean that if there is a frequency present of say for example 1 hertz we are assuming that this 1 hertz frequency exists over the entire duration of your signal over the entire time series if there is a frequency of 5 hertz we are assuming that this 5 hertz frequency or the signal with a 5 hertz frequency exists over the entire duration of your time series but does that really happen in practice so this is the basic assumption that you have a cosine wave or sine wave because we are essentially writing fourier transforms or fourier series as a combination linear combinations of sines and cosines so we assume that we have so the basic assumption is that the cosine wave of a particular frequency say for example 1 hertz 5 hertz or 10 hertz it exists over the entire time so you can see this is your signal and we are saying that this 
cosine wave of a particular frequency exist in your overall throughout your time series. But is it really the case? You must have seen certain signals particularly I will give you some examples for example the speech signal, the seismogram what I have understood from seismology and we I realize that there are uh, it has there are examples from atmospheric and climate science as well. So for example this signal as you can see you clearly see if this is your our time axis I have I'm sorry I forgot to put here time so this is our time axis for example you can clearly see that you have a high frequency component in the beginning because your oscillations or your these uh, periodic behavior is quite fast so you can see they are completing one cycle in relatively shorter time and here they are completing one cycle one period in a relatively longer time right so the period is longer here and the period is shorter here so you can clearly see that the frequency content is it changing with the time if it is a time series it it can be space x also with space so the interesting thing is the assumption of when we are doing Fourier analysis the assumption that one frequency is present over the entire time it is not true you see here that you clearly see in this example that high frequencies are present here but not here and the low frequencies are present here as much they are present here but not here so that means the frequency content is varying with the time right so the problem with the Fourier transform it's not really a problem but it's a problem it's not a conceptual problem uh, what I mean but it's a problem from a practical aspect so Fourier transform gives you a complete information regarding the harmonic frequencies like which frequencies of sines and cosines are present in your signal and with which uh, strength this is also important what is their amplitude right how much they are contributing in your total variance in your total power in your total energy however when we go from time domain to frequency domain using this discrete Fourier transform or Fourier transform we lose information regarding time so we just know that which frequencies are present but we don't know at which time they are present right so Fourier transform is an either or situation so either you are in time domain or you are in frequency domain you cannot be in two domains simultaneously when you are doing Fourier analysis so if you are in time domain you are losing frequency information when you are in Fourier domain you are losing time information so Fourier transform tells us exactly which frequencies are present in a signal or time series with which strength but it does not tell that at which location in time these frequencies are present so this is a practical limitation of Fourier transform so how do we address this so before that I will show you some examples so this is a very typical example as you can see here and visually you can easily see that there are low frequency component one slow varying wave which has been superimposed by some high frequency waves and you can see there are three four different types of frequencies and when I compute the Fourier transform or discrete Fourier transform using the FFT algorithm you can see that there is one frequency present somewhere here one is between uh, I think around 25 Hertz this is around 1 or 5 Hertz it can be one frequency is present around 60 Hertz another is present around 90 Hertz so you can clearly see that there are four frequency components harmonic components are present in this signal right and a famous example is here this we call a sort of chirp also so you can clearly see in the beginning there is a low frequency component then again there is a frequency increasing then again frequency is increasing then again it is increasing so you can clearly identify that at least three to four frequencies are present here and when I take the Fourier transform and I can clearly see that there are four frequencies present in the signal as well but your Fourier transform is not telling it is telling you that which frequency component with which strength so it is telling you the strength of those coefficients also but it is not telling at which time this 30 Hertz or this 60 Hertz is arriving in your time domain right this you cannot see so you are losing completely this time information for example this is the basic chirp signal famous example for time domain 
uh, time frequency resolution you can clearly see that in the beginning the frequency is very high and as we are moving with time the period is increasing that means the frequency is decreasing right so that means the frequency content is not stationary with the time so when i take the fourier transform i clearly see that there are there are a band of frequencies present and that band is starting somewhere 3 hertz and going around up to 12 hertz they are contributing the most as you can see in the total power or in the total variance of the signal but i don't know at which time or how these frequencies are changing with the time we don't have any information here because this is frequency axis and here it is a time axis here you can see visually that as frequencies are uh, that frequencies are uh, decreasing with time but we don't know what frequency it is right so this is this was another example to show you that how when the frequency content is changing with the time fourier transform cannot help us much so if you want to see some local variations that how in certain time interval how these which frequencies are present and how much they are contributing so this is very important so how do we address this problem so you can think intuitively you can think it would be easier rather than we if we take the fourier transform of the entire signal which is from 0 to 10 hertz i just take the fourier transform first one second and then next time i take the fourier transform next one second and keep on doing this then maybe i can get an information like which frequencies with which strength are present in time domain this is an intuitive feeling that you break the time signal in different parts or segments and then take fourier transform for each segment and then see and then put those fourier transform corresponding to each time step what you are taking when you are moving it and then see a two dimensional plot with time on one axis frequency on the y axis and the amplitudes in the z axis or uh, as a color bar that is what is we are going to see but intuitively you can see that if my frequency is varying with time what should i do i should take fourier transform in a small window and then next time in the next window then next time in the next window and then see what happens that is what is so time fourier transform is that is what exactly we do in short time fourier transform so rather than taking the discrete fourier transform of the entire signal we take the fourier transform in small small windows and then see how the frequency content and the second uh, frequency and the strength associated with each frequency component varies with time so in that way we can get some information of time and frequency simultaneously so the step formal steps is like choose a window function so this window as i have taken a sort of rectangular window you can take a rectangular window also of a finite length maybe for 2 seconds or 3 seconds right and that window function you can multiply with your actual data you multiply it with your actual data so your window function can be a rectangular window it can be a gaussian window or it can be a hand window so you place this window as i have placed it i will show it later also at n equal to 0 and compute the discrete fourier transform corresponding to n equal to 0 so what this window will do we will see next in next uh, slides and then you keep on sliding this window because you want to compute the fourier transform for the entire signal so what you would do you will take a time step whether 2 seconds time step or 1 second then keep on sliding this window towards right and compute for each time so you can fix your one thing is that the window width is fixed so suppose your window width is 2 seconds then this window width is always 2 second only that you have to decide how much step you want to move it towards right whether by 1 second or by 2 second so better that you at least keep some overlap when you are moving it to the right otherwise if you don't keep a overlap then what will happen then you will miss the information from some segments of the signal so how it so that is how it is done 
So ba basically the idea is this, that was a rectangular window example. If I take a sort of Gaussian, this is your signal. If you have a Gaussian window, first time you took that much. So what it will do? It will keep only those amplitudes and remaining amplitudes it will be make zero because you are multiplying it. So the window amplitudes are one, they are normalized to one here. So they will be one and then they will be decreasing on the either side of this maximum. You can choose this location, for example, n equal to zero. So they will be zero elsewhere, right? Then next time you will move your window towards right. Then next time you will window, you will compute the discrete Fourier transform, then move it next time. So when your window is here, you see your signal is only that much. It is only, it is just truncating your signal. Everywhere else it will be, your signal will become zero because you are multiplying it and only this portion will remain. Next time only this portion will remain. Next time this portion will remain. Next time this portion. So you will compute FFT or discrete Fourier transform. You can compute it using uh, FFT algorithm. So this sort of transform was first computed by uh, Dennis Gabor in 1946 and he did it with a Gaussian window. So sometime when you do it with a Gaussian window, it is also called Gabor transform. So finally, what we can do that we can plot the different Fourier transform at each time step, whatever step you have taken, you are moving it by one second or two second, then that will be your time axis that you are moving it by one second, two seconds. And you will also have frequency content because when you are taking the Fourier transform of this. So one thing is that within the window, uh, one assumption is made there that within the window, the signal is stationary. So you have to keep the window dimension or window length such that the signal is stationary within this window. So that is what I'm trying to show here. Look, suppose look here, you have a time signal like this, you can clearly see that the frequency is varying with time. So this is a rectangular window here, right? So I so this was the last or this is a portion which is covered here. So in the beginning your window could start from here also. But the window width will remain same. Then you will slide this window. So in the beginning without, if we take the uh, discrete Fourier transform of the entire signal, you see there are two frequency components as you would expect. But when you truncate it, you used a rectangular window. Rectangular window means it is it is having amplitude one within this window length. Suppose this window length in this case is around, I think three point something. And beyond that, the amplitude will be zero. So because you are multiplying it with, so when zero is multiplied with any number, it will be zero. So it will just truncate your signal into this portion. And when you will take the Fourier transform, you can clearly see that you are still getting the contribution from this portion because it is still there one hertz but you see when you were not using the rectangular window your Fourier transform was looking like this but now its amplitude has gone down because only small portion of this you have considered if your window will be again full then it will come again like this if your window would have been up to here only you would see that the amplitude of this portion will go completely zero but here it is I'm just I just kept to show you in a way that if it is only half, it is only up to around less than six, then you still see the amplitude there, but it is significantly reduced, right? So that is the role of window that it can pick some frequency vibrations in particular location of time within a location because now it is telling you information from this time, this Fourier transform. It is not telling you from the entire signal. Right? So this is the idea. So mathematically, we write it like this is your input signal. M is again the index. The window function is written like N minus M. And this is how we write e to the power minus j omega N. That is how we write the discrete Fourier transform. So your N will be the shifts. Like if you are shifting it, your window function by one, Next, every time you are shifting by one, so in the beginning, suppose you kept it at n equal to zero, next time you kept it at n equal to one, next time you kept it at n equal to two, n equal to three, so, for, so on and so forth. So this will be, you will have a two-dimensional plot or two-dimensional information. One is 
corresponding to your time shift or your sample shift one is the Fourier frequency as we have in the discrete Fourier transform and then when you take the mod of this and you square it what you get is a spectrogram right so because we saw that we can get an estimate of power spectral density in or in general spectral density if we directly take the discrete Fourier transform of your time series and just plot the square of this. We saw it in the last class, right? That this is another way. One way is that you compute the autocorrelation function or autocovariance function and then take the Fourier transform of that. But one way is that you just take the discrete Fourier transform of your time series and just and the uh, take the amplitude of it, the mod of it and square it and plot it against frequency that gives you a estimate of periodogram, right? So here we do this time frequency analysis that we have uh, Fourier coefficients corresponding to different time shifts corresponding to different frequencies and if we take the mod of that because it will be again a complex quantity if we take the mod of that and square it and plot it what we will get a spectrogram but often people prefer to see it in the log domain so you can take a log of this also so that is what is a spectrogram the spectrogram gives you time and frequency information simultaneously so again I just want to show you a simple example which is coming from our chip signal. So in the beginning the frequency is low and later the frequency is increasing. We want to see here that what is the effect of window, shape of the window. So whether I take a rectangular window or I take a triangular window or I take a Gaussian window or I take a Hunning window because it is up to you, you can choose. So what is the difference between these different windows? This is very important. Why we should have different windows? Why we should not select certain windows? So if I take the Fourier transform, it looks like this of the entire signal. It is the Fourier transform of the entire signal. Now if I take a rectangular window, what happens? So if I take a rectangular window and multiply it with my of certain length and multiply it with my actual signal, the Fourier transform or the discrete Fourier transform what I get is this and you can see there are some side lobes some side uh, high frequency vibrations are, are here when I take a triangular window there is one like only one peak and those side lobes are diminished slightly but when I use a hand window which looks like your Gaussian I see that I just get only one peak corresponding to whatever frequency is inside and the side lobes are gone. This is very important because these contribution from those frequencies on either side, this is very important because we call this spectral leakage in signal processing terms that your information which should have been concentrating only between 1 to 1.5 hertz, uh, between this frequency range, this is not 1 to 1, this is just time. So between this frequency which is around 25 hertz but you see that there is a smearing effect the energy is getting smeared or getting spilled over another frequencies rather than being concentrated only on this particular 25 hertz thing because there is only around a frequency 25 hertz so when you use a rectangular window what happens that information or energy get spill over in the, over the another frequencies or it gets smeared over another frequencies rather being concentrated on that particular frequency which is inside the signal right this is essentially called Gibbs phenomenon also spectral leakage and Gibbs phenomenon because this is happening because of the sharp edges of this rectangular window whenever there are sharp edges you can clearly see sharp edges means high frequencies if there are sharp edges in time domain anywhere you will see high frequencies this is I'm telling from you from my experience and you can see it uh, in some examples also you can clearly see this here also there are sharp edges so there are still there is some contribution or the, some smearing that or some spectral leakage actually the term is spectral leakage and here there are no sharp edges it's very nice smooth function and you can clearly see that it is a smooth function here so there is not that much spectral leakage an interesting thing I would like to tell you, you can prove it yourself and you should prove it yourself. The Fourier transform of a Gaussian function 
if you have a Gaussian function in time domain and you take a Fourier transform of this, the Fourier transform will again be a Gaussian function. This is a very important property of Gaussian function. So that's why often in more often than not people prefer windows or functions which are which looks like Gaussian function in time frequency analysis. So this is the effect of rectangular window and I will show you an example that if we have a rectangular window you can clearly see that your energy is getting leaked to another frequencies and that will create a resolution problem that we will see you can easily see that the frequency ideally the, the entire energy should have been concentrated or located on a single frequency but it is getting smeared or it is getting leaked to another frequencies what it will do that later on if there is any other frequency present like this so these will create a problem of this will create a problem of resolution you will see this you can see here so this is my rectangular window of this time frequency signal here where frequency is increasing with time you can clearly see with the time the frequency is increasing this is your time axis this is your frequency axis with frequency the time is, uh, with time the frequency is increasing so the contribution is coming more and more from those frequencies but at the same time we can see that the frequency in the beginning it was close to zero and later it increases so this is the spectrogram with rectangular window and you clearly see this smearing this spectral leakage effect that it is leaking the energy to other win, uh, to other frequencies and when i do this hand window you can see the leak leakage effect has been reduced we don't have any contribution from those frequencies now neither here so most of the energy is concentrated where it should be at those frequencies but still we, we see that the shape is like this it's not like a spike right but the rectangular the point which i want to make is that the rectangular window creates a problem in resolution whereas those smooth window gaussian type windows which we call a hand window improve the resolution one another important issue in time frequency analysis is the resolution in time domain and frequency domain so that is how we write because we are choosing the windows of fixed length so for example if we want to make our window shorter like you can choose a window of 10 seconds you can choose a window of 5 seconds or 20 seconds so if you are choosing a window of 5 seconds that means you are improving your resolution in time because you will have information sharply around 5 second window or 2 seconds if you are further decreasing your time window like you will have information in a 2 seconds window of time that which frequencies are present right so you are improving resolution in time domain when you are decreasing the window length because if we take the window, we can take the window of the, of the length of the entire signal as we usually do, the usual Fourier transform because there the window is the entire, uh, has the length of the entire signal. But when the window, you decrease the window length, that means you are increasing time resolution now. But when you increase the time resolution, you lose the frequency resolution. So this is you see. This is, you are increasing time resolution but you see that you can only see now there are only two frequency components so you are losing frequency resolution now if you increase the time resolution i'm sorry yes if you uh, increase the window of your time uh, if you are uh, if you increase the length of your window function as you are doing here if you want to improve your frequency resolution so what you will need to do you increase your time window length you are increasing your time window length here it was a shorter length here it is a larger length so what will happen that you will get better frequency resolution i will explain it mathematically that you will get a better frequency resolution so there is a trade off that when you increase the window size or window length you get a better frequency resolution if you increase it uh, the uh, if you decrease the window size and window length you get a better time resolution but at the cost of the frequency resolution so why this happens <clears throat> so we can quickly see it here so suppose this delta t capital t delta t n is number of samples this is your total window length this can be equal to the entire signal also this is also a window this can be of the length of your entire signal 
this is also when you take a data point from any uh, any series of data you are essentially taking a rectangular window directly right so this is the length of your window function so you can vary it it can be as big as or as large as your total length of your data uh, signal or your time series ts is the sampling rate or sampling interval n is your number of data points so that's why the window length is equal to n multiplied with the sampling interval so the sampling interval i am writing now ts delta t by n n number of samples f sampling will be 1 by ts right sampling frequency so time interval is suppose 0 0.01 second so the sampling frequency is 1 by 0 0.01 second that is 100 hertz right that means you are taking 100 sample within one second so that's why it is 100 hertz so i can write it n by delta t because ts i can replace from here so nyquist frequency as i have discussed in the beginning it will be 1 by 2 half of f sampling so your f sampling is this i forgot to write here 1 by 2 so there should be 1 by 2 now for example if you want to increase your frequency resolution just i want to give you an example from here so if you want to increase your fre frequency resolution what you would do suppose you have nyquist frequency is half of your sampling fre frequency so that is what the frequency range which you can reconstruct if so if you are sampling at 100 hertz per second that means 100 samples per second so the maximum frequency you can recover from your data is 50 hertz so if your nyquist frequency is for example 50 hertz and there are 100 frequency samples inside this just for example 100 frequency samples within 50 hertz now you want to increase your frequency resolution you cannot increase your samples frequency samples so what you want to do that keep the frequency sample number 100 constant and re reduce the nyquist frequency right so earlier your nyquist frequency was 50 hertz now you try to make it 25 hertz so 25 hertz divided by n so your frequency resolution will be more because there will be more points inside 25 in comparison to 50 hertz right if you divide 50 by 100 the frequency resolution will be 0.5 hertz and if you divide 25 uh, half of it if you reduce your nyquist frequency the frequency resolution will be 0.25 now so that means you are able to resolve more frequencies the difference between more frequencies but if you want to keep n constant and want to reduce the nyquist frequency what you will have to do you will have to increase the length of the signal or the length of your window function so you can do that but you will when you are increasing the win uh, length of the size of the window function essentially you are losing time resolution now so that is the point that if you increase the uh, length of your window function you will lose time resolution but you will get more frequency resolution and it's other way around if you increase if you make your delta t as small as you want so that you can have better time resolution your f Nyqu nyquist will keep on increasing and that will make problem in resolving small frequency differences or it will worsen your frequency resolution so that is essentially comes from those who are have studied uh, quantum physics in your, uh, and you still remember the Heisenberg uncertainty principle so it is essentially coming from there that it is impossible to have time and frequency information with infinite simul precision simultaneously you cannot have it there will always be a, an uncertainty so I am just giving an example from our earlier uh, which I shared you in the beginning this example I have done myself so as you can see in python so this was our chirp signal that in the beginning there was a high frequency i have just shown the opposite of it that in the beginning there were low frequency and then it was increasing so here it is a uh, other way round 
the Fourier transform look like same you can see it does not give any information about time, but when you take the periodogram you can clearly see that this frequency information is decreasing with time. As you move at later times the frequency most of the power is coming from the low frequency signal and in the beginning the most of the power is coming from the high frequency components. So, this is time frequency analysis that is what the benefit of time frequency analysis that it gives you simultaneously information about where most of the power or most of the energy in signal is coming from which frequency component and in which times because sometime you would like to know around which time this information is coming from. So, that is what that is why time frequency analysis is important. In next class we will discuss about wavelet transform which is another way of doing time frequency analysis. Thank you.